In this lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving radical equations with one radical term. So you'll see down here that in each of these equations, there's only one square root or radical term. Uh, in order to solve algebraically, uh, what we do first of all is isolate the radical term. You could isolate it as an entire radical or as a mixed radical. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, the second step is that you would square both sides in order to eliminate the radical. The third step is that you'll solve the remaining equation. And finally, it is always, always necessary that you make sure that you check your solutions in the original equation and reject any extraneous roots or, or solutions that aren't actually working. Uh, sometimes it's possible to inspect solutions. Uh, so if I looked at this first equation, uh, we could probably inspect that there's no solution. However, I'll show you how you can get to that point otherwise. Um, your first step in order to isolate the radical term, which is that, uh, first step we subtract 2. So we are left with, in this case, uh, the square root of x plus 4 is equal to negative 7. Uh, at this point in time, you could say there's no solution because the square root of any expression can't be negative 7. Uh, but if you would like to move on to step 2, which is square both sides, you can continue. You would get to this point here where x plus 4 uh, is equal to 49 and then subtract 4, and you'll get a solution of x is equal to 45. Uh, however, I've already spoken to the fact that there's no solution. That's why I say uh, the fourth step in this method is you must always check to see if your solution actually works. Uh, and you'll see here that it doesn't. If I substitute 45 into this equation, I'll get the square root of 45 plus 4. Uh, plus 2 is equal to negative 5, which leaves me with the square root of 49 plus 2 is equal to negative 5, and we'll end up getting that 9 is equal to negative 5, which is not true. Uh, so that means that there is absolutely no solution whatsoever. Um, you'll also see that in the description it said we have to state restrictions on the variable. I should have done that first. Uh, we learned in previous lessons that the radicand, which is in this case x plus 4, cannot be negative if I have an even index. So as far as my restrictions go, uh, my restrictions would be that x plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Or in other words, when I isolate x, it's that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. That's my restrictions, but my solution is that there's no solution. Uh, in this next one, I already have the, the radical term isolated. It's a mixed radical, but I can leave it that way. Uh, or I could divide both sides by 4. It's totally and completely up to you. Uh, but I would suggest to avoid fractions to just move on to step number 2 because the radical term is already isolated, and square both sides. Uh, in this particular case, when I square both sides, uh, I'll show the work here, but you don't have to show these steps at all, uh, we end up getting, on the left-hand side, we end up getting <clears throat> 16 and square root of 2, 3x's. I wouldn't multiply those, because you'll see that what we have to do is take out that pair as 3x. So in this particular case, the left-hand side would simplify uh, to just 48x, and the right-hand side would be 4x squared. Uh, two ways you could solve this. One is by, uh, well, the first step, irregardless, has to be making one side equal 0, because this is now solving a quadratic equation. Uh, you could either use the quadratic formula with a equaling 4, b equaling negative 48, and c equaling 0. Or, if you are more familiar with factoring, which will be faster, uh, you could uh, factor out the GCF, which in this case the greatest common factor is 4x, so we would be left with x minus 12. Uh, so we'll find out from those factors that in order for that right-hand side to equal 0, either 4x equals 0, which would give us a solution of, sorry, I'm running out of room, uh, x equals 0, <clears throat> or x minus 12 equals 0, which will give us another solution of x equals positive 12. Uh, what we need to do still, uh, I didn't talk about restrictions yet, but as far as solutions go, we need to check both of those. So if I substitute a 0 into the equation, I'll have 4 square root of 3 times 0 is equal to 2 times 0. We'll end up getting 0 equals 0, so that works. As far as 12 goes, if we check it, uh, we would end up having 4 square root of 3 times 12 uh, is equal to 2 times 12, which in this case is 4 uh, root 36 is equal to, sorry, 
24, which is 4 times 6 equals 24, which both sides are 24. So in this particular case, uh, both of our solutions would be x equals 0 and 12. Those are both solutions. As far as restrictions go, uh, if we look at the radicand here, our restrictions would be that that radicand 3x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So after dividing by 3, you'll see that the restrictions on the variable is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So our solutions are 0 and 12. Our restrictions are that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, in this next one, we'll start with the restrictions. Uh, in this particular case, with our restrictions, uh, we will see that the radicand 2x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And when I solve algebraically, I end up getting 2x is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll find that our restrictions are that x has to be greater than or equal to a half. Uh, this is what we'll see is if we get an answer that's greater than or equal to a half, uh, that it may be a solution. But if it is less than or equal to a half, less than a half, it will definitely not be a solution. Uh, for this particular one, we're going to isolate the radical term. So if I subtract 5, I'm going to end up getting the square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to 7. And if I square both sides, uh, what we're going to see happen here is uh, the pair of 2x minus 1s would come out as a single 2x minus 1, or in other words, the square root and the squared term will cancel. Uh, so we're left with 2x minus 1 equals 49. After adding 1 and dividing by 2, we'll end up getting a solution of 25. Uh, what we need to do last, because 25 is greater than a half, is we need to check it. Again, always in the original. So in this particular case, our check would look like this. Uh, 5 plus the square root of 2 times 25 minus 1 is equal to 12. So 5 plus the square root of 49 is equal to 12. And we'll end up getting that it is indeed a solution because 12 equals 12. So our solution would be that x equals 25. Okay. In our last one, you'll see the restrictions are a little bit interesting. If we think technically about what values would make this uh, radicand negative, uh, n equals 6 would actually be a potential value So, because uh, 5 minus 6 is negative. So um, you'll see why it's a little bit tricky if you do the um, mathematics behind this algebraically. Uh, I'll just make you aware of something. So the restrictions are that 5 minus n have to be greater than or equal to 0. So when I subtract 5, so I have negative n is equal to negative 5, uh, and then divide by a negative 1. The important thing is if you ever, ever, ever divide by a negative, what needs to happen is the sign needs to switch. Uh, so in this case, n actually has to be less than or equal to 5 as far as our restrictions go. And you can see that because any number that's less than or equal to 5 will leave this positive. For example, negative 2, which is less than or equal to, to 5, would give us 5 minus negative 2, which is 7. And that's a positive radicand. So just be careful if you're dealing with restrictions and dividing by negatives. Um, let's go ahead and start solving this equation. Uh, after subtracting n from both sides, <clears throat> Uh, you'll see that we have negative 5 minus n. Square root 5 minus n is equal to negative 7 minus n. And then if we square both sides, which is what we're going to do next, because the uh, radical terms are each already, or the radical term is already isolated, what you'll see is on the left-hand side, we have uh, negative 1 times negative 1 times the square root of 5 minus n times 5 minus n technically. So all we're going to be left with is the coefficients become positive, and this pair of 5 minus n's come out as a single 5 minus n. Uh, so the left-hand side simply simplifies to 5 minus n. The right-hand side is negative 7 minus n times negative 7 minus n. Uh, that side will simplify to uh, 49 plus 14n, plus n squared. Now if we make one side equal 0, I would suggest making the left-hand side equal 0, and then put it into standard form. We'll end up having n squared plus 15n uh, plus 44 is equal to 0. In this particular case, uh, you could use a quadratic formula, but I would suggest fact trying to factor first. And you will see that the two values here uh, will be plus 11 and plus 4. So that will give us solutions or potential solutions of negative 11 and negative 4. 
what we need to do next is just make sure these are both values are less than 5, less than or equal to 5, but we still need to check if they work in the original. Uh, so if I check negative 11, you will see that I'm going to get, uh, starting around a room, so I'll check negative 11 down here. I will get negative 11 minus the square root of 5 minus negative 11 uh, is equal to negative 7. So negative 11 minus the square root of 16 is equal to negative 7. So negative 11 minus 4 uh, does not actually equal in this particular case, it's negative 15 equals negative 7. That's not true. So negative 11 is not a solution. If I go ahead and check negative 4, I have negative 4 minus the square root of 5 minus negative 4 uh, is equal to negative 7. So that's negative 4 minus the square root of 9 equals negative 7. And you will see in this particular case that this guy uh, does work. Okay. So our solution here would be n is equal to negative 4 is a solution, but n is equal to negative 11 is not a solution.